All right, we're out here today, guys, to give you guys some tips on how to make tennis fun for juniors. What I want you guys to do is make sure that you're not just using words to express your point of view. Try to use sound effects. Sometimes sound effects help get your point across to the kids. Also, it's a very good tool to have the kids listening to the ball when they hit it. You don't want to. You really want to hear what's going on. As an example, when I go to hit a slice serve, I want to hit it and hear that. Or if I hit a forehand, you really want to hear that. Or you hit a slice and you want to hear. So it's really a good idea, guys, because it really helps the kids when they're listening to the ball, they're really paying attention to the ball. So, and they'll have a great time doing it. All right, most of the time, the best way to get your message across to kids about the game of tennis is through actual game situations. Like this game, where the instructors are sharing one racket and all the kids are involved at the same time bumping the ball back and forth, most of the time it's just the best way to keep kids enthused about the game of tennis. Sometimes lessons become very technical and oftentimes very boring. Change it up once in a while, add a little bit of creativity. John right here behind me is going to demonstrate this is a simple junior technique of just walking and balancing the ball on the racket. Now this time he's going to be demonstrating a duck walk included in his balancing act. As you can tell, it adds a little more creativity and a lot more fun. Alright, we're out here guys to make tennis fun for juniors. So all you pros in the city of Ottawa when you're teaching tennis, don't wear standard white collar shirts and tight white shorts. Make sure you're out there and make it look fun. One, how to make, one way to make it fun, guys, is to, is to, is to laugh. You make the tone of your voice different when you're presenting stuff to kids. Vary your voice. Don't sound really dull or boring. For example, Derek is very boring. Get your racket back. Blow your waist. Sometimes it's really boring just to play tennis all the time and just do drills. And in doing so, it's good to have a little variety. One way of doing so is adding other sports you can play. Sometimes playing a little soccer with a tennis ball adds a lot more variety and a lot more interest within the game. Hi, I'm Arthur and I'm joining with my three buddies over here. Today we're going to be talking about poaching and doubles. Now watch how I cut across the net and poach to break the rhythm of the shot. By poaching, that means taking something that's not really yours. Hello and welcome. My name is Arthur and today we're going to work on the inside out forehand. It's a very effective shot for aggressive baseliners. What you want to remember is when you get in position, you want to have a semi-open stance so that you get good twists at the hips and good twists at the shoulders. Then you want to follow in and attack. Okay, so what I did there, I was in position, I had my semi-open stance, I got good twists at the hips, good twists at the shoulders. Remember, semi-open stance, then you got them exactly where you want them. Hello and welcome. My name is Arthur and today we're going to work on the inside out forehand. It's a very effective shot for aggressive baseliners. What you want to remember is when you get in position, you want to have a semi-open stance so that you get good twists at the hips and good twists at the shoulders. Then you want to follow in and attack. Okay, so what I did there, I was in position, I had my semi-open stance, I got good twists at the hips, good twists at the shoulders. Remember, semi-open stance, then you got them exactly where you want them. Welcome, my name is Arthur, and when I'm teaching tennis to people, I want them to look like athletes. That doesn't mean just standing here and waiting for the ball to come to them. That means focusing on the ball, that means having an athletic look. Get your knees flexed, focus on the ball, be ready to hit a forehand, be ready to hit a backhand. Look at the baseball players, look at the basketball players. They're doing it, why can't tennis players do it? So make sure that when you're getting ready for the ball, have that athletic look. Hi and welcome, my name is Arthur. Today we're going to go over the forehand roll. It's a very effective shot because you pull your opponent out wide and off the court. What you have to remember is to really brush up on the ball when you hit the shot. So as you saw there, 
I created a lot of topspin by brushing up on the ball. Okay? And I pulled my opponent off the court and I got him exactly where I want so that I can follow and finish. Hi, welcome. I'm Arthur. Today we're going to go over the running forehand. Now the main thing with the running forehand is you want to have good balance. And in order to get good balance, you want to plant the right foot on the ground before you make contact with the ball. So what I've done is I've got good balance, I plant the right foot, I make contact with the ball, it helps me to get good shoulder rotation and good hip rotation. Okay, my, my name is uh, Michel Diego Brugois. I am a tennis pro from, uh, at the West Ottawa Winter Tennis Club, uh, Winter, Winter West Ottawa Summer Tennis Club, also Ottawa South and at Capital University. And, uh, I'm just to have a crew behind me because I'm trying to tell them how to to help them for uh, overhead. The best way to do this is when you come to the net, make sure that you use hammer grip to have a, a great overhead. And also when the ball is coming, make sure that you always get your racket behind and the pronation of your arm give you a lot of power, uh, speed uh, on the ball when you hit it. And uh, this is what I told for the, the, the student behind me. You can watch them over there. They're practicing, and this is the best way. Make sure that by using hammer and the pronation of your arm and sideways, you get more power and speed. Thank you. For all of you uh, viewing, I'm sure that everyone's familiar with uh, the looks of a, an average wheelchair. As you can see, uh, what I'm sitting in does not uh, compare to that. As you can see, the wheels are cambered at the back, my feet are tucked in underneath my seat under my bottom and that is of course to have as much weight on the back wheels itself in order to allow uh, pivoting as efficiently as possible and that is how we uh, work on our mobility on a tennis court itself. Wheelchair tennis is one of the few sports that people in wheelchairs can compete against standout players on an equal basis. Um, wheelchair players can play recreationally with friends at public courts. We can play in league play. And since 1999, when the International Tennis Federation changed the rule, now a wheelchair player can complete it in any tournament against uh, any standout player. Uh, the rule modification has been changed so that a player in a chair gets two bounces. So as a player gets an option to hit the ball a second chance. So a wheelchair player can now compete against an able-bodied player on any basis. For the forehand stroke in wheelchair tennis, because we're so low to the ground, we have to get good neck clearance on the ball, so we recommend using a western grip, which is a grip like this. You want to bring the racket back, drop the head of the racket, keep your elbow bent, hit through the ball, forward and up, and have your elbow come up and complete the stroke. Adapted wheelchair tennis is only 26 years old. It began with an individual, Brad Park in California, in 1976, who had a dream. Uh, since that time, it's developed to the point where we have thousands of players playing in 80 countries over the world. We have a professional uh, tour uh, that has half a million dollars U.S. It's run by the International Tennis Federation, and we have uh, over 130 tournaments on that tour. Some dream. Wheelchair tennis. What is it? How is it played? Played by people in wheelchairs. It's played uh, with only one rule modification. We're allowed to second bounce to the ball. Same net, same court, same game. We have several ways in which we can uh, maneuver the chair around the court, different ways of turning the wheelchair. Uh, one of these ways is referred to as a crossover turn. I'll demonstrate both a forehand and a backhand crossover turn. In leading off with the forehand, the ball would be struck with a forehand topspin and the arm would come across the body with a crossover turn, having me turn inside the court, which would be referred to as reverse mobility, and then I would turn back into the court and prepare, prepare myself for the next shot. On a backhand topspin, the ball would be struck with the right hand and my left hand would cross over to the opposite wheel, allowing me to turn outside of the court. Again, reverse mobility and preparing myself for the return of the shot. Okay. 
As in able-bodied tennis, uh, wheelchair players must always keep their chair in motion. Uh, we are taught to keep our chairs moving as with able-bodied tennis, uh, you are taught to keep your feet moving. Uh, we accomplish this in what we refer to as the figure eight movement. What we will do is we will move the chair side to side from one side of the court to the other. And this in charge will uh, keep our momentum. Uh, if you want to make a reference to a, a shark in water, once they stop moving, they're dead. Or if you refer to, uh, if you're on a bicycle, if you were to be at a stop sign, the, the amount of effort it takes to get the bicycle moving, it's the same thing in wheelchair tennis. If the chair stops moving, uh, you become slower. We want to keep our wheels moving and enhance our mobility. In wheelchair tennis we have two types of services which are being used today. The first service which could be compared to able body tennis is the ability to rotate the hips into the ball. Being in the wheelchair remember that for my hips to move the chair has to move as well. So to demonstrate that service the ball would be tossed up we would grab the wheel, spin the wheel in and strike down on the ball, pulling back on the wheel, there rotating my hips. The other service would be to allow the chair to remain mobile, throwing the ball up, resting on the knees to keep the balance and striking the ball down. And those are your two mechanisms of serving the ball in wheelchair tennis today. There are a few important things to remember in the wheelchair service game. You want to set your chair up four to five feet behind the baseline. You want to toss the ball up above your head, not in front. And you want to keep your eyes on the ball and hit through the ball. So the uh, purpose of my being out here today with George is to demonstrate for a beginner the top spin forehand. This is uh, rather difficult shot shall we say because he always has to maintain an open face with his racket to meet the ball okay so this is his grip which he picks up off the ground and that's it now George demonstrate by keeping that racket face open and uh, there's there's all we need okay George you know I want the ball okay so the first thing George over here and you know what to do with your racket. And all I'm doing is getting him to hit with an open face. You don't have, have to push it, just easy. That's good. Okay, now go back a step, George. George goes back a step, and he'll take a step into the ball. Step, excellent. Step, excellent. Okay. So now that You've got that, George. We'll go to the actual hitting. So at this point, the whole concept is hit up with an open face. You ready? That's right. And you see there's the top spin forehand with the step right into the ball. Again, George. Perfect. Okay, that's good. Move to the back. Back further, back further. Okay, so now he starts hitting the ball. Easy, George. Remember, you've got the step, George. Come on. Perfect. Move back. You're going to kill me. Okay, again, George. Okay. All right, George, you're over on the corner now. And this is his running forehand. Okay, again, George, hit it up. Come on, we got perfect. Way to go. Come on, watch. Good. Keep it going. That's the way. One more. Come on, get going. Okay, well done. That's George and his top spin forehand, and that's the way I teach any kid to, to hit a top spin forehand. George, that's great. So the uh, purpose of my being out here today with George is to demonstrate for a beginner the top spin forehand. This is a rather difficult 
shot, shall we say, because he always has to maintain an open face with his racket to meet the ball. Okay, so this is his grip, which he picks up off the ground, and that's it. Now, George, demonstrate by keeping that racket face open, and uh, there's, there's all we need. Okay, George, you know I want the ball. Okay, so the first thing, George, over here, and you know what to do with your racket. And all I'm doing is getting him to hit with an open face. You don't have, have to push it, just easy. That's good. Okay, now go back a step, George. George goes back a step, and he'll take a step into the ball. Step, excellent. Step, excellent. Okay. So now that you've got that, George, we'll go to the actual hitting. So at this point, the whole concept is hit up with an open face. You ready? That's right. And you see there's the top spin forehand with the step right into the ball. Again, George. Perfect. Okay, that's good. Move to the back a bit, George. Back further, back further. Okay, so now he starts hitting the ball. Easy, George. Remember, you've got the step, George. Come on. Perfect. Move back. You're going to kill me. Okay, again, George. Okay. All right, George, you're over on the corner now. And this is his running forehand. Okay, again, George. Hit it up. Come on. Pick up. Perfect. Way to go. Come on, watch. Good. Keep it going. That's the way. One more. Come on, get going. Okay, well done. That's George and his top spin forehand. And that's the way I teach any kid to, to hit a top spin forehand. George, that's great. Beginning in tennis, you've got to get your student Hitting that ball, so we want it hitting over the net. That's your enemy right there, okay. Okay, now turn to the side. And when you hit it, bounce, hit, bounce, hit. And again. Bounce, hit. Very nice. Bounce, hit. Very good. Bounce, hit. Beautiful. Bounce, hit. Good. Bounce, hit. Beautiful. That's the way it's supposed to be done. And that's starting kids in tennis. Now she's running to the ball. She started stationary. She didn't know what to do. Now she knows. She gets her racket back and lifts that ball over the net. And now she's hitting with control and spin. And that's it. She's a beginner. No longer she can hit that ball. We're going to introduce a little bit about the serve and volley. Uh, first of all, on the serve, you want to give yourself the best opportunity possible on your first ball. So what you want to do is change up your locations, change up your speed, and have your movement moving forward into the court as, after you hit your serve. After your first volley, move on in, cut off the angle and split step again so you can finish off the point with an angle volley. So, after your first ball, come on in, point will be yours. After you hit your serve, you want to move on in and split step around mid-court as your opponent hits the first ball. That will give you an opportunity to move sideways or forward for the return. So remember to split step, that enables me to move on in for that first ball. The mental training tip for today is called what to do in a changeover. You have about a minute before you have to start serving or returning serve. What changes do I have to make? Visualize those while you're taking your drink of water. Do I have to increase the number of serves I get in? Do I have to slow down the points between serves? 
What do I have to do to make changes so I'll be more effective on the next game? Hi, my name is Carol. I'm here to present some mental training tips. The first thing you'd like to do is do goal setting. Before you step on the court for a match or a practice, you'd like to develop one or two goals that you'd like to accomplish by the end. For example, I'd like to increase the number of first serves that go in, and I'd also like to work on hitting all of my balls deeper than the service line. When you've done your practice or match, evaluate yourself. How did I do? How can I get better? The mental training tip today is called imagery. You want to perform every action that you're going to do on the court in your head. All you need is your racket and no ball and an area where you can swing. I'm going to practice my forehand, back to my ready position. I hit a backhand stroke, back to the ready, do that perfect volley, do that perfect backhand volley. Every action that goes on in the court must be run through my head and I do it perfectly every time. What goes on in the head will transform to great physical skills. The mental training tip for today is called positive self-talk. You need to develop good affirmations inside your head so that will transform to great physical skills on the court. For example, this serve is going in, not I hope it goes in. I am strong, I am fit, I can hit every lob on the back baseline. Positive self-talk will get rid of negative feelings inside. The mental training tip today is called trigger words. Trigger words means that you have to think of words that will activate you and make you play better. For example, if I use the word legs inside my head, it tells me to bend my legs so I can move faster. A second trigger word is called punch, and I will use that on the volleys. If I'm swinging, I tell myself punch so I don't have any swing. The third word I use is called up, which tells me to square my shoulders, relax, and get back in the match. Hello, my name is Jim Catton. I'm going to talk to you today about the overhead, probably the weakest shot uh, in the game for the novice player. The key to effective overheads is to prepare early. Usually the novice player prepares late, which causes their stroke to break down, as well as to not establish a very good contact point. So again, to hit a good overhead, the first key is to get your racket back right away with your left arm or your opposite hitting arm up. By getting the racket back as quickly as possible, you can determine the contact point as well as your stroke won't break down because you'll have enough time to hit the ball and in balance, as I will demonstrate. Racket back early, hitting it cross court. Again, to hit an effective overhead, get sideways with your racket back and then go to the ball. That is the key to an effective overhead. Happy panic. Hi, I'm Jim Cadden. I'm going to talk to you today about hitting the sky-high lob with the overhead. The best way to deal with the sky-high lob because the ball is going straight up and straight down is to let it bounce. So the key is, as the ball is in the air, get your racket back and move back so the ball is established in front of you. Let the ball bounce and then move in and then hit it. It's easier to judge and you'll hit a more effective shot, as, we'll, as I will demonstrate. Ball is bouncing, move back, go in and hit it. Sky high lob, let it bounce and then hit it. You'll get a more effective shot every time. Hi, my name is Jim Cadden. I'd like to talk to you today about correcting the whiff off the overhead, one of the most common mistakes for the novice player. Whiffing the ball is simply occurs because you keep you pull your head down before you make contact, as I'll demonstrate. Ball is up in the air, I pull my head down. How many times have you seen that? That there is no technical fix for this other than a very simple tip. Keep your head up. By keeping your head up, I guarantee you'll make contact every time. Keep your head up if you want to make good contact with the overhead and eliminate whiffs. Hello, my name is Hyacinth. You're at the net, you've been lobbed, you handle it with an overhead smash. Two things to remember. Number one is fast footwork to, tr to move backwards. Second one is hand work to get the ball tracked in the air. So it's back up and track up. Here's what it looks like. Now you'll notice that that was the second part of your service motion from back scratch to follow through. Have fun with it. It's a smashing idea. 
Today's tip is on the serve, and I'm going to focus on uh, one area for you, the follow-through. Really, really important when you complete your serve to have your racket come down and follow through on this side. Be nice and nice and relaxed. Okay, so here's what it looks like. Start your swing, follow through on that side. Nice and relaxed, hold the racket lightly in your fingers, follow through on the left side of your body. Today's tips on the serve, and I'm going to help you learn how to line up your serve by using your shoulders. So here's what it looks like. When you're serving this way, get your feet all lined up, your body lined up straight, point to your target, and then just swing through. Everything lined up from the shoulders down to your feet before you start your serve. So today's tip is on the serve and I'm going to focus on how to use your legs for power. So when you're standing, ready for your serve, this is what you want to do. You want to get your knees bent and come up into your serve for power. So here's what it looks like. Down, up and through. Easier on your shoulder, easier on your arm, and you use your legs for power. Okay, uh, today's tips on the serve, and what I'm going to focus on today for you is how to make your arms work together in a nice, easy motion. Okay, a couple things to think about. Start together, come down together, go up together, you get a nice, smooth beginning to your serve. Okay, this hand, have your palm up, the back hand, have your knuckles up. That's all you have to think about. Stand on the line, start with your arms together, down together, up together with your knuckles up. So here's what it looks like. Remember, for good rhythm on your serve, start with your arms together, go down together, and up together, palm up, knuckles up with your racket hand. Today's tip is on how to get the toss in the same place every time on your serve. Hold the ball on your fingertip, drop it down to your thigh, up, and release it where you want it to go. I'll show you. Drop down, up, and hit it. It's as easy as that. Hold the ball on your fingertip, drop your arm down, release and point. Okay, we're down here at the Elmdale Tennis Club today on a beautiful sunny day, and we have the host and star of Celebrity Pets, Marlon Copeland. Hello, how are you? I'm very, very good, thank you. And how are you doing? Excellent. And welcome out to the Elmdale. Thank you. It's and a Mar beautiful spot. And Marlon's husband, the chairman of Zim. Hello, Tony. Him from Zim. <laughs> and Michael, you can't take, or no hostile takeovers of the Elmdale Tennis Club today. <laughs> a little bit of uh, an update on tennis in Ottawa, Michael. Well, tennis is thriving in Ottawa. Every year seems to be getting better and better, and I think this is off to a real flying start this year. Well, fabulous, and thanks, guys, for coming out today. Thank and, you. And, and how's Celebrity Pets doing? It's doing very well, and tonight we have an auction for the Humane Society at the Congress Centre, a bachelor auction. Fabulous. So it should be fun. Well, we'll try to get out. Yes. Thanks, guys. See you later. Bye-bye.
Dale Power here. Approach shots. You know, the general rule is to approach down the line, particularly deep. Try to keep the ball deep and get into the net behind them. You know, but a lot of times so you find defensive players with better cross courts, better backhand, they, they pass off that shot too well. So another alternative is send it right down the middle. Don't give it the angle away. Try that sometime. Dale Power here. Let's talk about beginners. Now, I run programs for Corel Corporation, and uh, they're all pretty much beginners when they come to see me. And I'll tell you, the one question I ask people all the time is, where do you think that ball should travel across the net? I'm telling you, 99% of them say half an inch, two inches maybe, at the most. They try to keep it close to the net. This is a, not a good tactic. What you've got to do is keep that ball at least three to four feet above the net, because the purpose is to keep the ball deep into the court, meaning into the big rectangle. Closer to the baseline, the better. Also, you're going to cut down on errors. Okay, Dale Power here. Defensive tactics. If you're playing a person who attacks a lot, they're taking, care, taking the net all the time. Most people panic. They try to pass all the time on the first shot. Now, this is not the case. You, you should make sure that you make the person volley that first shot, whether you hit it straight down the middle at them, or be a little more conservative, you don't have to hit the line. And also, remember the law. It's also another great tactic, particularly on a recreational level. Dale Power here. Offensive singles tactics. When you go to the net, you're basically going to go down the line all the time. That's the, that's the uh, best the tactic. I mean, you hit approach shots down the line. But there's only three things going to, once you get position, there's only three things going to happen. Either that person is going to pass down the line, they're going to go cross court, or they're going to try to lob you. What's the panic all about? Get your position and cover those three shots, and you should be all right. Dale Power here. Let's talk a little bit about percentage tennis. You know, in a defensive mode, you should be trying to keep the ball cross-court as much as possible. You'll run less. If you're going to attack the net, you're going to attack down the line most of the time. Now, when the opponent's at the net, keep this in mind. Your safest shot is down the line. It's maybe the most difficult, but it's the safest shot because you're going to have a better chance of having a second try at the passing shot. Cross-court is a bit risque. If the person cuts it off, most of the time you're going to lose the point. But remember, the lob. I don't see enough lobbing today. It's a great shot. Practice time. So important. You know, when you go to the court, I'm at the club a lot. I see people going out to the court and standing in the middle of the court, whacking the balls, hitting two in a row, and picking them up. This is, this is really feeble. It's a waste of time. If you're going to practice, try to see how long two people can work together on keeping the ball in flight, in play. I mean, try to hit 30 in a row. Work as a team. It's the best therapy for your control and your and your winners in the future. Ball control and consistency are the most important things in tennis. Dale Power here. Let's talk about the slice backhand. It seems to have been a lost art in tennis. I mean, you watch the pros, you watch a lot of people. No, everybody's hitting tops for today. You know, the slice backhand is a terrific tool. It gets you out of trouble. It's a great lob. Great for deception if you want to hit a drop shot. It's one shot that I think a lot of people should start addressing more. Get the, get the slice backhand back in your repertoire. Tail power here. Now that you have all your technical skills in order, what I'd like to talk about what you're going to do with it, what your tactics are going to be. You know, it's, it's basically grade four geometry. You've got to cross court it down the line and you've got to lob. The most important is not to miss. That's the key to winning tennis. If you have a two-handed backhand and you're standing at the net, you can't defend yourself properly because you're sort of tied up in knots. So when you're learning to volley, learn with a one-handed backhand, then you can defend yourself at the net. Otherwise, you're really in trouble. The most difficult volley in tennis is the one that comes at your right hip. You're standing out here, and it's, if you do this, you're going to get a, a bad shot. So keep your elbow in front of your body, step to the side, and you still get a good volley. But the secret is keep this elbow in front so you can react fast. My name's Evelyn. I'm going to give you some tips on volleys. Think of a V, level with your body, coming forward to the apex for high volleys. For low volleys, it comes forward and up to the apex. So you take your racket and you slide it down to the apex. 
for high volleys, for low volleys, forward and up to the apex. So think V for victory. Okay, when you're waiting at the net and the ball comes really fast at you, keep this wrist absolutely firm, the racket head up, and all you have to do is just turn your shoulder and the racket is in the right place for your forehand. Coming fast at your backhand, turn, react like that, and your racket's in the right place. If you're holding your forehand grip and you turn fast, look what's going to happen. Or it comes fast at your forehand and you've got your forehand grip, you've got to twist and get into, you know, really get into trouble trying to do that. So think firm wrist and just turn your shoulder and you're ready for the ball. Hi, my name's Hugo Obrey and I'm here to talk to you about double strategy. Now the first key to, to good double strategy is you have to know how to play those percentages. Now the first thing is you have to have a partner to get a high percentage of first serves in, so to set up that partner at the net to put the ball away. Now the second thing is for that return of serve to get that ball back in play, cross court if you can, so again to keep it away from that doubles player at the net. Now the very last thing is your partner and I have to cover that middle of the court so you can finish off the point because most of the balls are going to be there. Okay? That's how it's done. Now here's a tip for double strategy is you have to put pressure on those opponents. Now how do you do that? The first thing you do is you hit the ball very deep so while they're moving back you can move up. Now the second thing is you have to join that doubles partner of yours at the net. And the very last thing is you have to move around at the net. Don't give them a target so you can put the ball away easier. Thanks. Hi, I'm Jamie Soubliard and I'm talking about nutrition today. Proper nutrition in tennis is you are what you eat. So I suggest drink a lot of water before, during and after your match. The night before your big match, think about eating a pasta meal. That'll give you some energy for the next day and keep you energized. The day of, think about eating bagels, fresh breads, and of course, always fruit. Always have them handy. When you step on court for your big match, again, bring a lot of water. Stay energized and maybe have some Gatorade and a power bar. That'll give you quick energy. After you're done, again, water and perhaps a protein meal to re-energize yourself and give you the energy you lost the rest of the day. And of course, don't forget your beer because you've earned it and you deserve it. So have a good one. I think an important uh, way to improve your game is to play with different opponents. If you play with the same person all the time, you sort of get used to their style of play. If you play different people in the club, you'll come up against different styles and, and work out different strategies of how to combat each type of opponent that you play. That's a practical tip when you're playing tournaments. I think it's useful if you can bring two rackets that have the same string tension. In case one racket breaks, you'll still have a second racket that's exactly the same as your first and favorite. Jim Cameron, this is a tip for tournament play. One of the most important things of playing tournaments is you realize where your weaknesses lie. If you play a tournament and lose, look back at your loss and see how your opponent exploited your weaknesses. Hopefully then you can improve and work on that weakness before your next tournament match. Hi, my name is Kurt Carter and I'm here to give you a tip on returning serve. The grip is one of the most important parts of returning the serve and it's very simple. You simply grip the racket as though you're shaking somebody's hand so the V in your hand is on the top edge of the racket like this. This way you're ready to return a forehand with one slight turn that way and you're ready to do a backhand with one slight turn that way. So it's very simple just remember to grip the racket on the top and you're ready for action. Here's another important tip for returning serve. Proper court position. Against most people with a fairly strong serve, I recommend standing one or two feet behind the baseline and about two or three feet from the sideline and that way you have enough time to react on the return. If you're facing a left-handed server, I recommend standing two or three feet over to the left and that way you can cover their return. If you face a weaker serve, step in about one or two feet past the baseline and you'll have lots of time to react and move forward on the return. Here's another important tip for returning serve. 
What type of stroke I should use? I recommend a short flat drive. It's a very compact stroke. You point your strings at the ball, you step and stroke forward with your weight forward. Same on the forehand as on the backhand. Let me show you how it's done. That's the forehand and that's the backhand. So as you can see, it's a very simple, compact stroke and hopefully for you it'll be a very consistent one. Here's an important tip on returning serve. How should I stand to return serve? Feet shoulder width apart, knees slightly bent and leaning forward on the balls of your feet. And that way, when you're ready to hit a forehand return a serve, it's a quick step forward and on the backhand, it's a quick step forward like that. The weight is always moving forward and you're ready to move either side. Too many players stay on the backs of their feet and when the return comes, they're off balance and out of position and it makes it very hard to move forward. So remember, always be on the balls of your feet, leaning forward. Hi, we're going to demonstrate the return of serve right now. Andrew Schneider's key elements are in his return of serve, our split step off the return with a short compact backswing moving into the court for recovery. As you will see right now, Andrew's going to demonstrate. As you can see from his return to serve, it's short and compact. The, the key elements are behind the split step is to help maintain balance so he can move left or right for backhand or the forehand. This is what makes the return of serve a success. Backhand slice approach shot. You're going to use this shot when your opponent hits the ball low to your backhand probably on a short ball, when you want to come into the net and be in an offensive position. A couple things to think about. First, make sure your body is really well turned. That will help you control the direction of the ball and keep it low over the net. A low ball is much more difficult for your opponent to hit than one that's sitting up around chest height. Then you'll be in at the net, you can be in position to put away that volley. Service tip on when you're playing strategy wise when you're serving. I'm going to show you how you can serve a higher percentage when you're playing on a slower surface to get your opponent out wide. And then when you're playing on a faster, harder surface, that you try to serve more down the tee to be able to cut down the angles. We're going to demonstrate that for you. Are your forehands all over the place, some in the net, some out, and never where you want them to go? The answer could lie in your feet. The key to good control is contact position. You want to make contact with the ball in the same place every time. Slightly out in front of you, slightly to the side, and with your racket face nice and vertical. You may have to move forwards, backwards, or sideways to ensure you're in the right position. How do you do that? The key is good footwork. When preparing to hit your forehand, as well as getting your racket back, make sure you point at the ball with your other hand. This will keep you balanced throughout your preparation and help your shoulder turn. In addition, it's going to help you rotate your shoulders when you hit through. If you don't move that hand, it's going to get hit. Do you want more power on your forehand? Power in the forehand comes from two sources. One is the knee bend and the other is upper body rotation. The more you bend your knees, the more power you can get by pushing off the ground. As you rotate your shoulders, think of it as winding up. The more you wind up, the more power you can unleash. So get out on the court, rotate those shoulders, bend the knees, and unleash the power. Are you having trouble getting topspin on your forehand? The problem could lie in your grip. In order to hit effective topspin, you need to have your wrist laid back on your backswing. In order to achieve this, you should be using a semi-western or a western forehand grip. The semi-western grip has the knuckle of the forefinger and the palm of the hand on the lower bevel of the racket. The western grip is a little further around. So the next time you're out on the court, try that grip, swing low to high, and you should find that topspin comes more naturally. 
Hi, my name is Matt and today I have a beginner's tip for the forehand. It's important to transfer your weight in the direction that the ball is being hit. So step forward and across, transferring your weight from your back foot to your front foot as you swing through. You find your forehand is smoother and more powerful. Hi, my name is Pete Worthing and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about serving. The most important thing I think is to keep the ball high. A good high toss allows you to move the ball around the court and keep the opponent deep. If I keep the ball high, I can move the opponent deep and create more opportunities to rush the net. One of the most important things in doubles is to get to the net. The easiest way to do that is to toss the ball in front of you and follow it towards the net. When the ball's already in front of you, it takes, it takes nothing to get to the net. Bonjour, aujourd'hui Andrew Chandler pour une fin de démonstration d'un retour de service agressif. Deux points à remarquer. Premier point, son saut de pied au niveau de ses jambes. Et deuxième point, sa préparation de raquette qui est très compacte. Regardons Andrew faire ses retours de service. Comme vous avez pu le remarquer, ce pied d'Andrew était toujours en mouvement. Il fait faire un très bon saut d'appui et son mouvement compact permettait de renvoyer les balles à une très forte puissance. Hi folks, my name is Rick Valwa and today we're going to look at the top five ways to avoid tennis elbow. Starting with number five, let someone else hammer on your deck for a change. Number four, when high-fiving someone, don't, you're not playing football. Number three, when playing doubles, never give hand signals above the shoulder blades. Number two, never use the elbow like Tai Domi. And the number one way to avoid tennis elbow, sell your rackets and pick up golf. Hello, my name is Rick Valwa and I'm here to help you with your topspin forehand. Here's four quick tips for you. One. Namely, keep your wrist back throughout the whole stroke. Two, on the backswing, I'd like you to keep your right elbow in close to your hip. Three, as you come through, keep your shoulder down. And four, on the upswing, finish nice and high over your left shoulder. So if you take one look at it, full stroke, back, elbow in, drop, brush up over your left shoulder, keeping the racket on edge, and that'll be good for the day. Hi, my name is Rudy Srozir. I am the head pro in Emdel Tennis Club. I would like to give you a few tips on the forehand volley. First, try to get comfortable stand. Is there things as the baseball player when you are on the first base? Put the hands in front of you. When the ball is coming up to you, transfer your weight to the right. Step forwards with your left legs and touch the ball. I will demonstrate that. Ready there? There. A couple more, please. Now, same things do with your racket. Important is the ready position in front of you. And first reaction when you see the ball coming to the right, move your waist and transfer your body weight. There and step. There and step. Okay, I will demonstrate. Ready, step. Ready, step. See, it's a simple like that, and you should have no problem. No box swing blocking the ball. Thank you. Hi, my name is Rudy Slozier, and I would like to give you some tips, especially for the beginners on the forehand volley. So start with the ready position with your knee slightly bent there, put hands in front of you and watch upcoming the ball. Step with your left legs forward and catch the ball. Basically thinks about baseball player and he's catching the ball. Hi, my name is Rudy Sozier and I give you some tip on the forehand volley. 
First, the basic is stay in front of you with the racket belly in front, with eyes level to watching the ball there. First reaction on upcoming the ball is turn the wrist and transfer your body weight, step with the left legs and punch the ball and follow through in direction of the ball. So what we should remember there, wrist, step and punch. Hi, my name is Rudy Slozir. I am the head pro in Emdel Tennis Club. I would like to give you a few tips on the forehand volley. First, try to get comfortable stand. Is there things as the baseball player when you are on the first base? Put the hands in front of you. When the ball is coming up to you, transfer your weight to the right. Step forwards with your left legs and catch the ball. I will demonstrate that. Ready there? There. Couple more, please. Now, same things do with your racket. Important is the ready position in front of you. And first reaction when you see the ball coming to the right, move your wrist and transfer your body weight. There and step. There and step. Okay, I will demonstrate. Ready, step. Ready, step. You see, it's a simple like that and you should have no problem. No box swing, blocking the ball. Thank you. The overhead smash. A couple key things to remember when you're hitting your overheads. The first thing you want to remember is to take your racket all the way back. The second thing you want to remember is get that left hand up in the air to balance and to watch where the ball is. Third thing, get your feet sideways. You don't want to run straight back like, like this. All right. Now, if you can remember those three key things, your overhead should improve. The Australian formation is another uh, kind of uh, approach you can use to playing doubles. And here's what happens. Both the server and the net player are starting on the same side. He's back. <laughs> Hi, I'm Susan Stone, tennis director of the Ottawa Athletic Club, and I'm here to talk to you today about uh, formations in doubles. I'm going to start off by looking at a normal formation where the partner of the server is pu put uh, between the service line and the single sideline. In that position, he can stay, he can poach, or he can fake the shot. Let's take a look at it and see what it's happens. Oh, great shot.